Pa 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 and my, it, can't even fucking hum. Okay, Disney might be one of the most powerful corporations on the goddamn planet. They do not own the copyright to my goddamn voice, okay? Yeah, just give them, just give them time. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> anyway, we are here to discuss Star Wars Episode Seven: The Force Awakens, because all four of us have finally seen the damn thing. And, uh... I, I'm going to just give you all some warning. I We're probably going to start with some uh, non-spoilery stuff. When we get into spoilers, we'll say that, and that's when you know to stop watching the video if you don't want to be spoiled. But either way, if you don't want to be spoiled, don't scroll down because that's where the comic yeah. box is. <laughs> <laughs> that's where the monsters live. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> the Sarlacc pit. <laughs> Alright, so just to reiterate, our, the beginning of this video is going to be a very general opinion on the movie itself, and then as we get deep into it, that's when we'll give the big spoiler warning. Yep, just, just a quick what we thought, and then spoilers away. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm, I'm completely down with that. I, can, all right, I guess we should start then. Uh, who wants to go first for general opinion? Uh, I liked it. Uh, <laughs> it was a good movie. <laughs> I, I might as well, um, because um, I've actually had some opportunity to watch and rewatch the movie and analyze some things. And uh, I'll get—I won't get it, it too deep into that stuff until we start talking specific points. But overall, I really liked the movie. I thought the beginning could have used some more meat, though, because. Um, you don't get quite enough time to really get a feel for who the characters are, particularly Ray, before they start doing awesome things. And when you start doing so many awesome things without that kind of build up, well, let's just say there was a there was a good reason that they spent a decent amount of time showing us what Luke's life on the farm was like, you know? Uh and that's the only real problem I have with the movie. It's uh, it is a really fun movie to watch. Uh, it keeps up its pace. It doesn't have all that wonderful sitting around and talking that the prequels have. Uh, well, no, they, they do have some of that, like in the the middle scene with that not Mos Eisley bar. No, but, um, but you see, even uh, we'll be... that was more dynamic than most of what you got in the prequels because there was that amusing oh, well, little. Like that's hard. What's her name again? Uh, whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mas. It was that character, Mas. and I don't want to get too much into who she is. Is, but you know, she basically stole the scene and distracted you from the fact that everyone was sitting around and talking. But you know, it, 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 my my point is, it, it kept its pace up, and it was it was a fun movie to watch. And that 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 sort of goes back to what was good about the um uh, about the original trilogy, because in the original trilogy. Yeah, there was uh, there was all the story development and character development that you could ever want, but stuff was always happening, you know? And it it wasn't like the prequels, because the biggest issue I have with the prequels is that it, it alternates between stuff happening and stuff being explained, and stuff happening and stuff being explained. It's like it's a tennis match, you know? It's going back and forth, and that's not how you do a movie. You do a movie by... um. You know, you mix the exposition up with the events. You don't separate them. It's kind of like the prequels are a cup of water with some oil in it, in, and it's just been sitting there for a couple of weeks, and it's all separated. Yeah, where the hell is the oil? And, and, that, and that got away with me. But you get my. But you get the idea. Uh, the only other potential problem I can mention, as far as this movie goes, is that it it um. It follows the formula of A New Hope quite a bit, and it also, um, it, it, it has a lot of callbacks to the original, to the other two movies in the original trilogy. If you know, if you know to look out for them, you'll see that there's more than just A New Hope in there, but... And can I just cut I you think off we should there probably for a second to my spoiler yeah, yeah, warning yeah, yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can, yeah, let's just let's put our spoiler. That was very fast. Like one general opinion, then we're already heading into um, spoiler territory. All right, let's let's do the, everyone else's general yeah, opinion. Yeah, yeah, you, you go Lewis ahead. Can well, go ahead. So Lewis uh, can go on his I was, little. Uh... I, I was going to try right. and be vague about it, but uh, I'll talk more about it later. Yeah. Uh, to me, I think it's vague enough to say that my general opinion is I really liked a New Hope. <laughs> you, mean, <laughs> you mean the force? Oh, 
Oh, <laughs> uh, well, no, I'm just going to, I, I, I just, I really liked it. Um, I think we've talked about this before, but I've never been super Star Wars-y. Like, I, I love, I love the, the, the action scenes and the, the characters and all that, but it's never been something I've been super diehard about. And my same opinion goes with The Force Awakens as it does with almost every movie. It was a fun movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, it's just, it, it's you know, something I like. I do want to see it again. It's just, I don't know if it's something that I'm going to ever be super invested in. I will say that the thing that the the movie does, uh, the strongest thing to me about the movie is the characters. And although there is, like Lewis said, there, it does take a little bit of time for the snowball to get rolling, I think that the, the core cast of new characters that they have is very strong. And I'm really excited to see where they take their development in episodes 8 and 9. So... Uh, yeah, that that was just my biggest thing that I could say is that I think we've got a very good uh, core cast here, which is uh, refreshing to see considering, like, you know, prequels <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, Ryan, what did you think, though? As the dog billboard in Powerpuff Girls said, it's good. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean... More generally, yes, I really enjoyed it, especially after the prequels, because I remember when the prequels came out and just not liking them. Um, this really isn't a spoiler, but it's one of those I wish they hadn't really used time to set up 8 and 9, in a sense. Kind of going the Marvel route, with the movie is setting up other things as well as doing its own thing. Mm, yeah. Hmm. So, I, I, I've never, I don't appre- I never appreciate that in any movie. Yeah. Well, those, these are all great points to bring up when we get into the spoiler territory. Shall we get that into the says, spoiler shall we, territory? Shall we batten down the hatches? Yeah. Well, right, John, you didn't really give... Well, or was I Like the New Hope your your thought about the movie? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes, it was. But I can't go into... I can't really go into that without going into spoiler territory. <laughs> okay. So, um, I guess we should activate that alarm sound. That ding, ding, you know, ding, 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 Whoever's editing this, uh, edit the funniest alarm sound that you can get on a quick Google search. In three, two, one, now. There you go. Well, it doesn't sound like anything <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be really lame if whoever edits this doesn't actually add anything. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we, yeah, let's just say right off the bat, it was very weird going into this movie without the 20th Century Fox logo. Oh my god, it was so quiet. It was just Lucasfilms with silence, and then a long time ago... (laughs) Yeah, you know, I'm so used to seeing that at the beginning of a Star Wars movie, but uh, then I had to remind myself, oh yeah, it's Disney now. Huh. They couldn't have have worked out a deal to play the music. I mean... (laughs) Come on, that was that to me is just as iconic of an opening to no. Star Wars as the the main. No, theme. you know what? You just make it the same intro, but then at the top of the 20th Century Fox logo, you just add the word "not," not 20th Century Fox. <laughs> you just put a big Disney hat on top of the, the, no, the you, two and you, the zero. No, you you literally say 20th Century Fox, but it says Disney 20 whatever. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, why is it still 20th Century Fox? Because they were made in the 20th century. Uh, 20th century, yeah. That means they're obsolete. They don't reflect the current times. They reflect the time oh, they were made. You know what? That that explains so much about Fox. <laughs> so who saw it opening day? Did um, any of you go to a Thursday show? I saw, I saw, I saw yeah, Thursday should not count for the opening weekend. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even midnight on Thursday. It was like they started six o'clock. like six. But no, I went around noon on Friday because... There were still actually decent seats for that showing, so me and my dad went. Um, I go. I went Sunday at 10 p.m. because that was the only times I could get that would fit my entire family in a decent sitting position, not front row. <laughs> I went Friday morning, hoping to avoid the crowds. It was a packed theater. Of yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was a quiet packed theater. I'm and guessing I there were no kids there then. Extra- oh no, there was tons of kids there. I guess their parents took them off from I school. Got, yeah, I think their kids had like, it was like, I will go Kylo Ren on your ass if you speak up. <laughs> and we had a lot of kids, but everyone was surprisingly quiet. It was a very pleasant theater experience. Yeah, That's I went to 10pm so there were virtually no kids. Uh, it was quiet through most of it, but whenever a returning element like when the Millennium Falcon first showed up or when Han walked in it, they applauded a little bit. 
but yeah. that was about it. I did. I will say I did like the 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 reveal of the Millennium Falcon. I think was probably the classiest callback they did because it was just like, okay, the um. What about that, that ship? That's, that a, ship's that's a piece of junk. <laughs> and they don't show it until after the ship they wanted to go on blew up. <laughs> so I thought, I thought, like, I think some of the callbacks were a little bit ham-handed. We'll get to that. Um, but I, I liked the reveal of the Millennium Falcon. That was... Yeah, yeah, definitely agreed. I got a laugh out of it, too. Yeah, so, um... Yeah, it was, um... It was very interesting uh, seeing the, like, just visually looking at it. Because they ditched almost everything from the prequels, um, both uh, uh, visually. It is trying very hard to look like an original trilogy movie. Well, it's not as, it's not as sterile anymore. Um, F- what well, you get the sense that things are actually there this time. <laughs> well, because they use practical effects for, like, BB-8 yeah, and other yeah. things. Yeah, in fact, BB-8, the practical effect technology is so simple that they actually made a small miniaturized toy that they sell for over $100, but it functions the same way as the droid in the movie. <laughs> but yes, you I want do. it. I, I really want it, and if I had more money, I would already have it, but I don't, so... But yeah, the practical effects, my God, it, it, it looks so nice, now it's 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 got the technology of modern movies but it's got that or, that organic feel that the original trilogy had and yeah calling back to the original trilogy i think is going to be the theme of my critique for this uh, discussion well, of the Force for episode Awakens. 7 you knew it was going to happen it, i was just surprised a little bit at how much yeah, i'm going to say right off the bat i still love the film mm-hmm. but i think it reaches into that well too many oh, yeah. times. Yeah, definitely. It's not just it's not just like, oh look, here's Han. Look, it's the Millennium Falcon. Look, blue lightsaber and red lightsaber, stuff like that. It's the entire structure of the movie is almost point for point a new hope. It starts yeah. off with uh, a message on the droid having to go to the re- I don't know why they called the group the resistance. It does oh, like oh, oh, that, there's actually I, yeah. an explanation for that, but uh, it, it's it's, it's kind of lost on the film itself. Basically, the the New Republic and the First Order have a treaty, um, but uh, obviously the people New in Republic charge of the Republic doesn't don't want them. to actually not fight. So basically, the resistance is sort of like a, official unofficial fighting against the. I, I understand weird. that, but basically, I think they just came up with that so that they could call their group the Resistance because that sounded like the Rebellion, personally, and it it kind of just I don't know seemed a little bit much <laughs> to me. I think they could have called it yeah. literally anything else. And there is nothing I'm, I'm gonna and I'll also say there is nothing wrong with the movie or franchise reaching back into its own well to sell on that sense of nostalgia. But I believe Force Awakens did it so many times to a point where I got distracted, yeah. and at one point in the movie, rolled my eyes. We'll get to that in this. We'll uh, is that later on. late in the movie? Uh, it's it's around midway point, late. Yeah, pretty late in the movie. Where I rolled my eyes, but it, it this may sound weird. I started getting a sense for the original trilogy not because of like behind behind the scenes stuff, how J.J. Abrams was insistent on using practical effects for everything except for CGI. I'm gonna say that that was a great thing to do. Because oh yeah, for I'll, sure. I'll say right. This film looks amazing. It's it. Oh, uh, there. Force Awakens looks fantastic. The only part where I really like, aside from like the only part where some CGI was distracting, and I like this character a lot, but Maz. Maz yeah, Maz, very... Maz was Maz, Maz popped a yeah, little bit, but that was the only thing. It's because the the entire movie is is so organic looking that Maz just sort of she 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 walks on set looking like she stepped out of the set for the prequels, <laughs> but uh, yeah. infinitely better written. <laughs> I managed to get out on infinitely time. Infinitely better <laughs> written than anything in the prequels, mind you. <laughs> well, I'm actually I'm surprised that they didn't mention the prequels more because Maz has like one line that reference the only line that references anything in the prequels is it's just like. At one point, it was the Sith, and then it was the Empire. That was the only reference to the prequels. And I mean, granted, like I know people don't like the prequels, so you know, and I'm not not expecting Jar Jar or anything to <laughs> pop up. But there is stuff worth salvaging from them, I think. You know, so like I think a lot of people are expecting well, Ray to have a double bladed uh, lightsaber. The, the, yeah, uh, yeah, and that would be as much the prequels as the expanded universe. But there is one other reference to the prequels: Kylo Ren's hair. 
Uh, Kylo Ren. Yeah, oh, it, it okay. looks like Anakin's from episode. Three. It looks like a oh, really yeah, goofy version of Anakin's haircut. You didn't catch that because <laughs> he's obsessed. Oh no, with I Vader, didn't. You I see. just, <laughs> I didn't. Uh, all I thought was uh, was Pretty Boy, but we'll, I'm sure we'll talk plenty about you know, Kylo Ren. <laughs> what's really weird for me is that I started getting a New Hope parallels or just a really original trilogy feelings as early as the opening text crawl because. The, the, the one thing A New Hope did was that they capitalized certain objects on the text. Yeah, crawl, Luke like Skywalker. Death, like Luke Skywalker, Death Star, Republic, First Order. Episode seven did Didn't that. They do well, that so, did episode, they so did episode four with yeah. So did, did episode yeah. But the thing is, I think it also because episode st- four started on a shorter sentence with like kind of an exclamation point on it, like the the Empire is attacking or something like that. Episode seven did the same thing. Luke Skywalker has vanished. Yeah, or I noticed you could that just kind of similarity. Do it the way Revenge of the Sith did, and just start with war. And then there's yeah. also, and, <laughs> and then there's also God, that the, the movie, the the whole premise for like the first half of the movie is we've got this thing on this droid that needs to go to this group of people, and we have to get the droid there. It's you and know, you wind up on a desert planet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you wind up on a, and all and all that. And I mean, granted, it works, and I love BB-8. BB-8 is a great droid and i also liked that they managed to give bb8 a personality that was separate from r2 R2's. and r2 is my all-time favorite star wars character so like bb8 was just like kind of like not sassy but kind of like like there's the one point where i think where finn says i'm not part of the resistance and then just it, just it, just do like, it and he, gives, he gives a lighter and he gives a lighter thumbs up later <laughs> <laughs> it's just I I loved I loved I loved BB-8 and it could have very easily been the not R2 and so I'm glad that they um yeah that they were able to to give it I think it's supposed uh, BB-8 supposed to be a feminine droid or something I don't know um it's a robot so whatever but well, um I like BB-8 on a lot the but it, it of um callbacks it's not one of the things I want to mention is that they crammed so much referential stuff into this movie that I would honestly be surprised if they went this route again for the next one, because it's. I don't think they can pull hope. the same trick twice. It, it, it's not just a new hope, although it it is largely a new hope, except it's with some of the hope, key yeah. points reordered so that like Ben Kenobi dies at the end instead of toward that midway point, that kind of thing. Um, and we'll get to that in a bit, who the Ben Kenobi of this movie is. But um, they also, like, the key location in A New Hope was a desert. The key location in uh, Empire Strikes Back, and we're just talking natural environments here, was snowy area. Yeah. And the key location in Revenge, of, no, Return of the Jedi was forest. Well, we go in this movie from a desert to a forest to a snowy area. I definitely caught that. Um, I caught the I, desert that's, parallel that's with Jakku, but not the other two. <laughs> oh, I, I, I immediately thought Endor uh, yeah. when we went to the second. So especially, planet. especially the uh, the uh, Resistance's base. It's almost exactly the same one. Well, there's only so as, much they could have done with the, four. Yeah. There's only so much they could have done with the desert, but they threw in enough in the forest planet and snow planet thing that 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 it was completely different like the snow area hat was was also a snowy forest which is obviously quite a bit different from hoth and to uh, its credit because that was a great scene to have a lightsaber duel in um i liked i like that scene i do i'll get to my issues with the the final planet when we get more into the plot but um <laughs> uh, we the 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 start of the movie was uh, Poe Dameron was the name of the the fighter the fighter yeah. pilot guy right yes. and then um, he he gets captured and we see Finn um, see one of his friends die or something and uh, oh he sees them no he sees them basically massacre the village and he um, I do like you know later on we don't learn this until later on in the movie but his he was basically a stormtrooper janitor for most of his career so I get the feeling that this was his first ah, combat mission yeah and... <laughs> it was it was it was his first actual combat mission but um there's more to know about um Finn in the um, in the books that they made for the movie um, before the awakening specifically uh, Finn doesn't know it but his aptitude tests as a stormtrooper were higher than any of the others. <laughs> oh, that's but they yeah. they put him. He says that on the he on the the base that he was put there on sanitation. So he was a yeah. stormtrooper. Yeah, yeah that, that, that was his that was his non combat role. He was sanitation. 
Uh, but as far as uh, yeah. his his tests as a stormtrooper go, he was one of the best. And his only shortfall was that they thought he might be displaying too much empathy, which he was. Um, but th- one of the things to mention about this movie is that there's a lot of little extra extra facts that um, that were included in the books uh, before The Awakening, a young adult novel, and the actual Force Awakens novelization that that kind of help explain things a little bit better than just the movie on its own. <laughs> Like Finn. Yeah, because Finn having second thoughts confused me from the get-go. Because, like, it, uh, uh, you know, um, they don't explain this until later in the movie, but they, they get their stormtroopers by kidnapping them as kids. And, yeah. you know, unfortunately, this is a thing that happens in the real world. When that happens, these kids are almost universally universally brainwashed. And it would take a hell of a lot of willpower to, to overcome that. So yeah. It's... yeah, and they go out of their way to mention conditioning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and there's, the, the it, and I mean, granted, it would kind of break down the pace to explain like how it happened, but you know, they they, I do think that one shortfall is that they don't really explain how Finn kind of overcomes his his conditioning in order to yeah. to free Poe. Yeah, um, although it's there are some vague hintings throughout the movie and apparently this is more implicit in the novelization that Finn might have force sensitivity and that might have had something to do with how the conditioning didn't affect him as much well that but, there's implications with that just yeah, by him it's, having it's the, all, the it's all up in the air and that's the, 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 there's a lot of up in the air stuff Finn is up in the air at the end of the movie we don't know what exactly happens to him he's unconscious he's not gonna he's die not, yeah no, he's, he's not, not gonna, gonna die well he's not gonna <laughs> die but we don't know where he's going to be in the next movie. What's his purpose? Yeah, he, he, yeah. Because this movie, this movie in the beginning and in the trailers, which I know I shouldn't really fall for so much, but it made Finn look more important than he they probably set, was. They, they set up this guy to be the next Jedi. I think you that know? was, you know what? I, I think that was a bait and switch because I mean, I'm, we haven't even started really talking about Ray yet, but Ray is the, the Luke of the movie. And unfortunately, you know, it's stereotypical, but it's, well, yeah, Star you know Wars what? is I'm still gonna, a boy I'm gonna, brand. I'm going to call foul on the bait and switch description because maybe not. Sorry, I mean, that might have been a bad. The just, trailers uh, bad. are one thing, but who was front and center on the movie poster? It wasn't. Um, he was off to the corner with the lightsaber and this little small thing, like he was the Mace Windu. Finn's holding the lightsaber. He's holding the yeah, lightsaber, the, the... but he was off to the side, like Mace Windu or something. And Mace Windu had like five minutes of screen time. Uh... Uh, but it, it was it was uh it was Ray in the center and directly behind her the only other large figure on the poster was Kylo Ren, who was the main bad yeah. guy. So I was not yeah. surprised at all by her being the main character. I figure another reason uh, uh, Finn's hesitation in the beginning, uh, and you mentioned force sensitivity earlier as a plausible explanation. It just made me think. Okay, this guy's probably our next Jedi. It's probably the Force causing him to have these second thoughts. And he's, you know, this is, I guess, the so-called awakening. Or maybe part of it. Maybe there's more than one. Uh, I never I never took it that Finn was just going to be, like, the only Jedi. Or at least uh, maybe an up-and-coming Jedi uh, to get his start here. But they play it up like he's going to be the, the main guy. protagonist yeah. for a point. Yeah. And then as soon as Ray's brought in later down the in, in the film, and it's not immediate, but Finn almost gets completely forgotten by the third of the last third of this film. Um I would say. You know, I think it's 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 part of the it's part of I, I would disagree with that because Finn does go back strictly like almost fucks over the, the, the resistance's plan in order to save Ray. But I think the the way the film was structured was again a callback to a new hope in structure in that we don't meet Luke until about 20 minutes into the movie. It's the same way with uh, Ray in this, where we get, we get Poe and we get Finn and we get BB-8 on the, on their ship uh, escaping and all that. And then they land on Jakku and the, 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 then we start to really meet Ray who is our main character of the, of the movie. That's more what I got uh, from it. But, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as a character himself, I did like I liked Finn a lot. Finn was I, you know, my favorite character in the movie. He was the best written thing in the movie, to be perfectly honest. 
Uh, that that's interesting. Uh, one thing that I was really worried about was like they have him lie about him being part of the resistance, and at that point I was like, oh no, we're doing this. We're gonna have him lie about this through okay. the whole movie, okay, and then they're gonna Han, fight. <laughs> even Han thought that because he gave Finn a warning. He says, "Women always find out the truth." <laughs> yeah, but uh, it's just like uh, I was so glad when Ray just kind of shrugged him out uh, off about that. It's like we don't get the protracted. Oh, you lied to me. Let's yes. fight. Let's fight, <laughs> fight for half the movie. That that goes on forever. It it was like, I I was so glad that they didn't fall into that into that trope because that's my least favorite part of any movie that uses it. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, thank thank Christ for that. So yeah. Um. But no, Finn was fun. Um. Finny fun. <laughs> Finn was. Fun. I do think he did get the most complete character arc yeah, out of everyone. I, I, I also think that you know, a lot of comments and stuff seem to underplay Finn's role in the movie. I mean, it, it just granted, he's not the hero of the thing. He's not the Luke or even the Han. But uh, and I think that I think I think that's why. I think they're setting him up to be the Han, though. Probably. No, I got I got more po- I got more Han out of Poe, honestly. No, I Poe po barely does anything though. <laughs> well, Poe was Poe was supposed to die early on in the movie, but they changed the script part way through to include him uh, in in more, which is why he just sort of I comes wonder back why. out of nowhere. He was originally supposed to get killed off. Um, yeah, I thought Poe was more the wedge of the movie than anything else. <laughs> more like the base. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But um, but yeah, he 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 became the wedge, or well, I suppose you could call him I don't know Latino Lando Calrissian. I, I don't know. But um, <laughs> the uh about Finn, he's like I've seen a lot of people describe him as a wuss, and I don't see that. I mean, okay, it's it it, it, it he's not he's not non-stop badass the way Ray is, and I have my problems with Ray, Ray that I'll get to in a, in a, in a minute, but, you know, he, he, he's, he, he's badass on an everyman kind of level, rather than being an action movie star. He could use the lightsaber without any training, which, and as far as we know, not any overt force sensitivity, which takes an incredible amount of skill, which was, I think Finn was a cool character, yeah. like him, yeah. like he's not also knowing... Just... He's also just put in a lot of shitty situations where it's like, well, what did you want him to do here? He also, you know, a lot of people fixate on the idea that he didn't know how to pilot a ship or he didn't know how to use the, the, the gunnery on the TIE Fighter or the Millennium Falcon right on, right on the off. Personally, I find it interesting that he mastered those things so quickly on his first try. Yeah, which it's like that's – it's kind of weird in that I kind of saw Finn as the Han and uh, Rey as the Luke, whereas Finn was kind of – like it, I found it kind of a, a neat touch where Finn and Rey were both fanboys for for Han and like Jedi stuff but flipped in their role, which was interesting. Like <laughs> Finn was really interested in Luke and the Jedi and all that shit, but he kind of played the Han in a story perspective perspective whereas ray was a super like han fanboy and she functioned as the story's luke which i thought was really cool but, but can i ask <laughs> does finn need to be the no han uh well the that's trilogy? i know that's i know that's that's a part of the, the problem with the movie in general but like as that kind of secondary character who is cool but is not like the jedi kind of thing i think that that's more his role i guess i think it it was neat i suppose uh, I, I honestly, when I was walking into this movie, I expected them to have a lot of callbacks because, again, like although Star Wars is one of the most well-known things of like of pop culture just ever, like there's still a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths about the prequels. Prequels, and yep. <laughs> you do have to be like, okay, we're not gonna fuck this up uh, to some extent, which I know they shouldn't. I, I uh, it's kind of like the sonic colors of star wars i guess, I guess in in some way i suppose i i, I do agree though like the sonic generation. episode eight um yeah <laughs> yeah there you go that's a more it's, you know uh, i was i was tr- i wanted to say earlier that that watching um uh, the force awakens sort of felt like playing the generations version of rooftop run after watching uh, after playing the unleashed here's, version here's classic episode four and here's modern episode no, it's four. like you know how you play through sonic uh, uh rooftop run and sonic unleashed and then you play through it in sonic generations and it's all the same landmarks in a different order <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that for me. 
except in movie form. And there's balloons my, my, everywhere. My, 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 my thing is, is that for a sequel trilogy that really wants to harken back to the original trilogy, do we have to keep, do we have to play things, not exactly note for note, but relatively similar? Like, do we have to have only one Luke? Do we have to have a Han Solo? Do we I, have to have a Princess Slayer? Why can't, I, I want, I want two Jedis to be. I, I think Finn might end up being a, a Jedi because well, again, like one of the, one of the things that disappointed me about the original trilogy was, is that they, they make a deal about how, like Leia, like if Luke fails, Leia might become their new, their new like hope for the the rebellion. <laughs> well, we sure hope. Yeah, and um, <laughs> and Leia never does any cool Jedi shit. So I do yeah. think that we're gonna get to see like maybe Finn might not like become a Jedi master, but I think like I would not be surprised if we see him use some Force powers by the end of the the episode nine. Well, uh, at the very least. Here's the thing. At this point. The entire risk uh, that the entire reason Snoke and the Empire, First Order, whatever, don't want Luke Skywalker found or want to track him down themselves is because they don't want him to bring back the Jedi Order. Well, how's he going to do that by just training one person, you know? So having Finn yeah. as the secondary Jedi would, would, would you know, help move it toward there actually being another Jedi Order again. Uh, which, to be honest, by this point in the timeline, there already would have been a flourishing Jedi Order in the expanded universe, but fuck that stuff. <laughs> That's all dead now. Fuck you, Kylo Ren. <laughs> fuck you, Kylo Ren. <laughs> Kylo Ren killed the extended universe. <laughs> uh, okay, do we want to... Do we, okay, so, so if we're going to save... Ray for later. Do we want to talk Kylo Ren? Because I actually quite liked him. Uh, I, I love, I love, the, I love the fake Twitter account. <laughs> okay. Emo Kylo Ren. Emo, Emo Kylo, Kylo Ren is, Ren. is genius. Okay, here's the thing that struck me about Kylo Ren. Okay, I uh, Abrams has already has already discussed that. Force Awakens, as far as Kylo Ren is concerned, is more like an origin story, uh, where Kylo Ren is a half baked villain, half cooked, rather than you know your ready made Darth Vader dude who's already an established badass. Well, Kylo Ren basically does the same thing Anakin Skywalker did in episodes two and three in one movie. Except better. <laughs> except it doesn't suck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is like... Kylo Ren is Anakin written well. But here's yeah. the written... thing. You say, half, you say half baked, like he's half cooked. And that's the, my, that's my overall opinion with Kylo Ren. Well, I think that was the point too. I think, yeah, yeah. Then you know, mission accomplished. But it's still something I could bitch about. <laughs> uh, you see, I love Kylo Ren as a physical fighter, as someone who uses the Force and who can battle. I love him there. I don't like his personality. <laughs> um, like, you see, that's that's where I disagree. I thought he was a pretty interesting villain, all things concerned. Because... I think here's here's the way I look at it. First off, like in, in the opening of the movie where he freezes a laser with the force. That was badass. Yeah. I thought that was great. Thought that was amazing. Never really seen anything like that in the Star Wars universe, to my knowledge. Maybe the extended universe did that all the time. <laughs> and I just didn't know because I don't read that stuff. Uh yeah, I mean we've seen but, we've seen Vader block laser blasts but not stop one. <laughs> and I get the point that he's up and coming. But I think they laid it on too hard because he throws temper tantrums. Oh, dude, he throws movie. so many temper tantrums uh, b besides the ones we saw in the movie that when he's raging in the interrogation room when Rey escapes, the stormtroopers in the storm hallway stop just... yeah. and they just turn yeah. around and walk away. <laughs> you know, hey, here's the thing. I thought that was a great – I thought that was a funny scene. Like the stormtroopers telling him, like, stop, let's just go the other <laughs> way. Let him have his moment. But that, the, the film is also telling me I got nothing to worry about this guy. Because he's not there well, yet, and therefore he, I, well, I neither, should. Neither are well, neither are the heroes. So yeah, I, it it balances out, but for I think it holds more impact for a villain because this is the guy I should be afraid of. Well, it's you know to what me, I mean. I I saw it as dark. Dark side's all about emotion, like you know, letting your passions run through. I think he's since he's essentially just a Darth Vader fanboy, which I thought was <laughs> really cool. <laughs> He's just, he's taking that to its YouTube comment logical, uh, logical extreme where it's just like, okay, I got to have no inhibitions about how I act. If I'm angry, I got to show that I'm angry and use that to attack, which I think makes in, in some kind of weird way, makes an awful lot of sense. You know, like I, I do like, you know, the, the movie ends with Snoke being like, he has to complete, finish his training. So I think like when it comes to like his fighting skills, he's going to become more threatening in the later movie. Uh, um, yeah. 
I did not like Snoke <laughs> personally, <laughs> and I and I, I understand like that 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 is totally the point of Kylo Ren's character for this part of the movie, and that goes into a whole thing I have. Uh, I guess my biggest thing I have against Force Awakens, you know, I mentioned the the Episode Four parallels and all that, and that's that's a thing, but I can still enjoy the film regardless uh, as such, but. Force Awakens definitely feels like part one of a trilogy. Yeah, it does. Yeah, yes. that's what I was getting at. That's what I was getting at when I said it felt like it was spending a little bit too much time setting up things you know what for struck other movies. Alright. Episode four ended with a medal celebration where the heroes who had won the day were uh, being awarded and celebrated for their efforts. It felt like a conclusive ending. Episode one ended in a uh, celebration in which the heroes of the day were celebrating and being celebrated and everything felt like a victory. And uh, in both cases, the credits rolled from directly from that celebration. Episode 7 doesn't do that. Uh, even though it is, you know, the A New Hope of the trilogy, it doesn't end on a hopeful note. It just sort of ends on a melancholy uh, passing of the torch and... On a in reverse, actually, yeah. if you think about it, so it's it is interesting in in, in that sense. Um, I understand why they're uh, why they're doing it this way, though, because I mean, granted, one of the things I do like about A New Hope is, is that it's one of the only Star Wars movies that you can kind of take as like one standalone thing, because they didn't know they were going to have a sequel. When they already, when I already knew that there was going to be a trilogy of movies to come. And we're not going to see the end of the story until, like, probably 2020. Um, I had no expectation that we were going to have a solid conclusion at the end of Episode 7. Yeah. That was... Yeah. Ju- that was. I know for... Yeah, because me... I, I went to the movie to see... I went to see the movie with my brother Mark. And we both had the same opinion. We cannot wait for Episode 8. For two more years. Ugh. We can we cannot wait for Episode We know Episode 8 is going to fucking rock the place. But we also felt disappointed that we couldn't say the same for Episode 7. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we were excited for this film. I'm, I'm, not a die, I'm not a diehard Star Wars fan, but me and Mark were excited for this film. We wanted to enjoy the film, and we did enjoy the film. But we're looking forward to the next movie for different reasons. The wrong reasons, I would say, because we felt that Episode 7 wasn't satisfying as a standalone, unlike Episode yeah. 4. I can, under- I can understand that, and I do think that Episode eight will probably ramp up things and be more entertaining uh, on its own merits. I think than the first order strikes back. Oh, wait a <laughs> second. Uh, no, yeah. I'm. I you know I I do think that they're going to tone down the the nostalgia. Baiting, oh, they yeah. But they're they going to end cause... the movie with a with a reveal like episode five. There, it's yeah. no doubt in my mind that's going yeah. To I I think for eight and nine they're definitely going to tone down the references because. For seven, they kind of needed to say, "Here, we're okay. This isn't the prequels. Here's all the stuff you loved." Real this time, we swear. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But uh, yeah, yeah, I think they they ran through so many references in in episode seven that 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 they don't have really any left for eight and nine. So I'm I'm fully expecting eight and nine to actually go off in a in a in a in a completely new direction. Although it would be really fucking hilarious if the middle chapter in the trilogy was a better standalone film than the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I, say, I I I completely agree that. I, I feel about the episode eight. They're gonna lay down. They gotta tone down the references. But the moment I see Lando. I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I found my Colt 45. <laughs> Go, like, oh, I'm back, motherfuckers. And I see you got another black man. Uh... But uh, I, I'm i more excited for Episode 8 than I was for Episode 7. Mm. But th- to go back to what Ted was saying, uh, I guess Snoke. Oh, I you, do, you I mean. Dis- I dislike Snoke. You mean Dark Lord Andy Gollum. Circus. <laughs> yeah, he's played by Andy Serkis. He was the Emperor. He was just straight out the Emperor. No, he, might as well have, no, he might as well have been the holographic projection of the Emperor from The Empire Strikes Back if it had twice as much screen time. We know practically nothing about him. And what we do know about him isn't even from the movie, it's from the book. Apparently he was some guy who was active during the Clone Wars as far back as then. A dark Sith, uh, a dark Force leader, not a Sith, but a dark Force user who had several apprentices and eventually became interested in the Skywalker line. So basically, he's Palpatine, except not officially a Sith. You see? Um, 
so he's this he's the guy who seduced um Kylo Ren or Ben Solo or Ben Organa, whichever last name he goes by. Uh I think it's Solo because Kylo Ren is Ben Solo with the letter swapped around and a few of them changed out. <laughs> Do you see what they did there? That's that's not clever. I did at all. think I you know, I did think that like I I you know, when I find when they reveal that Kylo Ren's real name was Ben, I thought that was really kind of melancholy. Like, oh, well, he, they you, you want to know something I, funny? OK, what in the expanded universe, I, one of Han Solo and Leia's uh, kids did go to the dark side, but it wasn't a Ben. There was a Ben. It was it was Luke's son. Luke's yeah. the Ben Ben Skywalker, a totally upstanding. Sorry, totally upstanding Jedi and all that. Uh, but, uh, yeah, and that's another thing about this movie that's kind of weird for me is because I have a I, – I'm like I'm not totally immersed in the expanded universe, but I have a fairly working knowledge of how things went after Return of the Jedi, and there's a lot of weird inversions going on. Like in the expanded universe, Chewbacca dies. I think they dropped a moon on him or, or something. Uh, but Chewbacca's alive and well now. It's Han Solo who kicked the bucket. Um, oh well, oh like I gotta say, Chewbacca was great in this movie. Like I love the scene where he's getting treated. Like once they reach the base, <laughs> and then the the nurse is like, "Oh, you're very brave, darling." <laughs> and the, I just I thought that was hilarious. I <laughs> what love... do you mean you're cold? <laughs> I like how Maz's first question to Han is, "Where's my boyfriend?" and and Han is just like, "Chewie's back at the ship." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's I, I loved the humor in this movie. It was probably the the funniest Star Wars I I would say, and you know that's just oh, yeah. I just I appreciate humor, so you know that's <laughs> that's you know, not how yeah. the force works. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're the, cold. <laughs> the little physical exchanges between Han and Chewbacca, I think, were the best in the entire series. And yeah, I agree. The uh, Chewbacca's. Uh, I, I guess pantomiming because he doesn't really speak a lick well, of English. Well, Chewbacca yeah. actually in this it, it's, movie, it's still Peter Mayhew, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's still Peter Mayhew. Uh, Chewbacca in, in this movie actually has a little bit more physical movement capability, in spite of still being entirely practical, which I appreciated. Like they, for instance, they probably have a better suit for him. He has would, an opposable guess. thumb now. <gasps> he was able to push the detonator button. I've I don't think he's ever had opposable thumbs in a movie before. Uh, well, he's got like bear claws, so you know. Yeah. Um, well, well, um, I uh, one thing I did, I got a kick out of Han using Chewie's like uh, cross, crossbow. <laughs> I like this um, thing, yeah. But you know what? That's what's funny about that is they actually went to the trouble of really establishing that bowcasters are powerful. I mean, if you play Star Wars video games, you probably know that already. But they went to the trouble of establishing how much kick those things have, just so that Chewbacca could hit Kylo Ren with one of those, with one of the, with a shot from one, and even the and even the playing field little for Ray and Finn when they had to fight him later on, which I thought was pretty clever. Yeah. Um oh we we I know we've kind of uh tiptoed around it a lot. What did you guys all think of Ray? Uh generally speaking. I was about to ask if we we're gonna segue e, into Ray right now. How do now. I put this? Yeah because um, I mm. thought she was I thought she was a fun character, I will say, but I am I am always I'm sorry to interrupt you Ted. I just want to lay down my yeah. foundation real quick. Go ahead. I'm always down for a strong female protagonist. Uh, it's it's my thing. <laughs> uh my my biggest problem with Ray and I think this this mimics a lot of problem uh, the the same problem people have with the character in this film is that she's too perfect at what she does. Yeah, she's a little too good at everything. Yeah. Um, she, she eh. around the midway point where she's what well, the force starts going but she starts becoming one with the Force. She gets too good too quick, in my opinion. Oh uh, well, I will. Um, just a fun fact: uh, the scene where she uses the Jedi mind trick, that stormtrooper is Daniel Craig. Yeah, yeah. I found that after the fact. You know, it doesn't really affect anything, but it's neat. It's like, yeah, take that, James Bond. I I disagree. <laughs> I, uh, that it, it's it's perfect. not massively overdone, but it's still kind of there. That kind of annoyed um, me a little bit. Can I interject with my thoughts here? Um, sure, sure. You're okay. probably going to say what I want to say, but better anyway. So. <laughs> I'm actually in the Go middle here. And, and, you know, I've argued in defense of Rain in comment boxes and stuff, but mostly in defense against the flat-out she's a Mary Sue accusation. I think it's more... No, she's not a Mary Sue, no. but it, the inklings are there. Yeah, it, 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 she edges toward it. But I, there's a... I, 
there's a problem that 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 writers tend to run into when they're trying to portray when they're you know consciously trying to portray a, a kind of protagonist that you don't often see represented in this case female but it could be done with any racial or minority or whatever um hypercompetent character syndrome where you, you you're afraid to really portray a character as having flaws because they, controversy because yeah but, but uh, Luke was a whiny asshole at, at, at the beginning of a new hope and he didn't really do a whole lot of awesome stuff until until he, Luke didn't really do anything the really middle cool of the trilogy until yeah no I don't think Luke did anything really cool in a new hope until he finally destroyed did, the Death like, Star the Death Star, uh, the Death Star but, but you know even if he did okay Anakin which is a badly portrayed character in every sense of the word they really worked to lay on the fact that he was good at piloting before he actually piloted anything. And that's the that one... That was what the, the pod race yeah. was and that for. is the one yeah. skill Ray has in this movie that is never explained. She's, she's just ne- good at flying everything. Well, it, it, yeah, she's, she, she's not only a good pilot, she's also a good mechanic. Yeah, but the, well, the, the mechanic being a good thing mechanic makes sense. Makes sense yeah, because she's, she's a, a scavenger. scavenger. Yeah, the, the mechanic thing I can get behind, totally. The fighting thing, yeah, because if you live that kind of rough-and-tumble existence, your ass better be a good fighter. Piloting, I just didn't see any real um, foundation for that in the movie, and it's something that both of the previous protagonists really took pains to establish before they had to do anything with. So why they didn't do that in this case baffles me. But another thing that bothered me, though, is that we don't really see a whole lot of her life on Jakku. Like, at all. Like, we have a few, we have a few really good scenes. I liked that opening scene where they showed a day in her life as a scavenger. Yeah, she was, she was counting down the days, she was sledding down, all that stuff was, was, was great, but let's have a conversation with some of the people at the place where she's, um, where she's turning in her scavenge for food rations. Learn a bit about the, about Jakku. Well, they established that she was a loner, that she didn't yeah. really talk to everyone, and that's why she's so rough but, you with, know, like, Finn there was and a the, scene in the trailer. Uh, early on. There was a scene in the trailer, or maybe a bit of dialogue from the trailer that was supposed to happen to Jakku, where this old woman, who was across the table from her, asked her who she was, and she said, no one. That was completely cut from the yeah, movie. Yeah, that, that was never in the movie. The old woman uh, was Another still line in the movie, that was... Though. Uh, there, it's, there was another. There was a line from Luke that was cut in one well, of the trailers. Uh, a lot of like, the lines. No, that, that was Return of. A lot of the lines they used in the trailer were from Return of the Jedi. A, a lot of the oh, lines really? in the trailer were recorded specifically for the trailer, but this was an actual sort of scene thing that happened. There were a couple scenes yeah. in the trailer that were cut completely. Like um, Maz was originally supposed to um, go with um, Ray and Han to. Uh, the the resistance base, and at some point there was a scene where she passed Luke's lightsaber off to Leia, but uh, they changed that at some point between the trailer and the actual movie, so that Maz gave the lightsaber to Finn instead, and Finn I- instead gave it to um to Rey. Um, I'm not really sure what the logic behind all of that was. I haven't really delved too deep into I- it, but. I'd have to. I, I, this is a movie that I definitely want to see again, and I'm planning on seeing it on Tuesday uh, with my family um, because of that. Uh, but I don't want to say that Ray is uh, no. like overcompetent. I, I do Not agree. They never really established that she's a good pilot. I agree with that, but. I think but she shows it, far it, too much weakness in order to be not, considered like hyper uh, hyper like competent. Uh, at... it, but it, it's not the fact that she's a good pilot or a good mechanic. Uh, like that's not the reason why I think she's too good at what she does. It's, it's again, it, it's it, it more. It all goes down to her attunement to the force. You know the where she learns how to. Mind, Jedi mind trick. It's, Jedi yeah, mind I, trick. I raised, I raised an eyebrow at that too. It's like, didn't it take Luke forever to learn to do that? Not she did it way really. too fast. We, we're actually, no, we're never given any real insight onto how much Luke practiced at that particular trip. trick. No, he just, he, he's well, able to just do it at the doing, beginning. He just started doing it. Well, we know, it we, well, we know he can't do it until Return of the Jedi. Yeah, he, so. yeah, he doesn't use it until Return of the Jedi, but he also doesn't try to use it and so well sorry. we don't see him yeah. try. we also luke gets two movies and a shitload of und- undefined time in between uh yeah. to learn all this shit ray gets an hour <laughs> ray uh, though, it, within the same movie here, here is the thing about ray though she never uses 
any specific force thing more than once. So whether or not she could reliably no, she uses, do she uses... so is left completely up in the air. Yeah, uh, the only she only does two force things throughout the entire movie, as far as I remember. She does the Jedi mind trick, which to be to be fair, it takes her like a good three or four tries in order to get that three. stormtrooper to start three t- tries in order to get that stormtrooper to start doing what she's doing. And then personally, what I think is the coolest scene in the movie, she's able to force pull the lightsaber towards her even when Kylo Ren's trying to do it um, himself. Like, I thought that, to me, was the coolest scene in the movie. It almost, it I always, almost pissed I, away I, I, I always... <laughs> I always took the like the Jedi pool to be an easier trick to pull off than mind wiping someone. But my fact, the, my my point is, is that yeah, I appreciate the fact that she tries to do it and it doesn't work. I love that. It's like you, you will you will you will loosen these bonds and you'll release me. And he says, "No, I will tighten your bonds." Scavenger scum. How about that? <laughs> yeah, you scavenger scum. You didn't need that for why you jerk. <laughs> but uh, but it's like within a few minutes she tries again, and it works. And I was like, huh? I always thought that was something you needed weeks or months to learn well, how to get you know, right and then here, here here she get i'm only going by what the movies have taught me they, they never need... really establish how long it takes yeah to do they that, never though. establish a time frame but what they do establish the one thing that they did establish with luke was that the biggest obstacle to him doing something was his belief in being able to do it for example yoda fully expected luke to be able to lift a starfighter out of a swamp and the only reason he couldn't was because he thought he couldn't, because he thought it was too heavy. But he was succeeding to a point there until his mind got the better of him. So here is the question, and this is not really a, an ironclad defense in Ray's case because it's never directly addressed in the movie. But is Ray different in this respect? Does she think about these things differently? That would be a wonderful thing to explore during her training with Luke. Obviously, Ray just has a higher midi chlorine count, and that's oh. what she can do. Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh. Yeah, but I never thought that it was that big of a deal, personally, because they don't have her, like, shooting force lightning and choking people and doing all kinds of prequel force tricks. She does two force things in the entire movie, and that just, to me, shows that she has a natural attunement with it, that she never really tried before. And they kind of, they do establish that she, like, her and her, like, her little, like, mind vision when she touches the the lightsaber and Maz saying, you have that power too, I sense it in you. I think, you know, I didn't think it was out of nowhere at all, personally. So I, that's my issue. That's basically what I, I thought, I didn't not expect it. So that was, I I assume that this is, again... Uh, we're gonna have to wait for episode eight to really see. Yeah, it. I'll, I'll, yeah, I was about to say I'll the, reserve final judgment on Ray. I was going still. into this movie expecting to well, let Ryan finish. Yeah, I was just to say I reserve full final judgment on Ray until we get episodes say eight and nine to flesh her out a bit more. But just on episode seven alone, because that's all we have at the moment, she's a little kind Shaking of bland and a little yeah. Well, I thought she was a little bit... I thought she was entertaining, at the very least, because yeah. she showed Bland a lot is, more enthusiasm. Bland is than... the wrong word, I think. She's, she's entertaining on screen, and she's got the potential, but she's the, the, not quite as... She doesn't stand on her own as a character yet. Just not yet. Uh, but It's hard to... It, you know, it's very hard to take one movie of a trilogy and like look at that when every other version of Star Wars we have has a whole trilogy to pull from from yeah, these characters. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's well, that, that's, that's just the reality of what we have right now, though. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, it's just difficult for me to criticize this character because I went into this movie expecting to like her so much, and I just wound up liking Finn more. Um, and, and Rey, I'm just sort of giving the benefit of the doubt. And no, that's not, that's a little too harsh. I like her, but I'm but I also see some issues that need to be fixed as the trilogy progresses. Uh um uh, uh if I could just go in personally into my biggest issue with the movie um is I don't want to say the action scenes cuz the action scenes were fine. A lot of them were a little bit underwhelming, although maybe this is me coming off the the heels of the prequels and you know, say what you want about Phantom Menace, that ending lightsaber fight still the best one in the series. Uh... I hated Star Killer Base. I hated Star Oh, you Killer mean not Base. Death Star? Not no, Death it's Star? the Death Star, but so oh, you want to talk about let's... Mary Sue? Star Killer Star, Base is the Mary this... Sue Darth the, Death right. Star. I, I I mentioned I mentioned the uh, earlier in its discussion a part of the movie where I rolled my eyes. 
Who I, was the star killer? Uh, what, are you talking about but, when they explain how big it is and how big it was? A few things. One, look at how they, much look they, at how much bigger look, it look is. Look how much bigger it is than the Death Star. I was like, okay, that's my eyes are starting to go clockwise a bit. It destroys and five planets it, that, all around. Once. It, it destroys, which has no impact because we don't whatsoever. care. Because they we don't, don't know any of those people. They don't call up a planet that means anything to anyone, unlike Alderaan. Yeah, which was which means yeah, it's just a simple, it's a numbers game, yeah, which means nothing. Uh... And thirdly, and this is what made the full rotation, the way they destroy it, the same exact fucking it's like, way. <laughs> are we doing this again? It's like it has a it has a critical design flaw that can Actually, be exploited by one fighter. The same not, way not, by not two so Death Stars have a critical design flaw because from the outside that they would they have to they they do shield it. It's just you got to go in and turn off the shield. Yeah, before it can yeah. Up. So it was but kind of a. It, was, it is yeah, still it the same It was a combination plan, of the two Death Stars, except this time, they actually put the fucking shield generator inside the Death Star. Wow. But... <laughs> uh, uh, but it's just, the Star Killer base makes no sense. Okay, it draws the energy from the sun. Wouldn't that pull the Death Star out of the Star Killer base out of position as the gravity shifts? And when it blows up, the sun just goes back? Wouldn't that mess up the rest of the solar you system? Know, How does the planet survive so close to the sun? It makes no sense. And I, granted, it's Star Wars, I shouldn't care, but I was just like... What? <laughs> I direct you to Neil deGrasse Tyson's Twitter. That, that, yeah, that I saw version those of too. sun power sort of reminds me of, you know, the uneducated fuckwits who think solar energy will drain the sun. But, um... <laughs> but, but, you know, I the Starkiller base, what got me most was the name, Starkiller. Do you know what else was called Starkiller? Oh, it's, it's Lucas's favorite yeah. guy that he only refers to as that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Star Killer was Darth Vader's secret apprentice, who was apparently so powerful in the Force he was able to grab, force grab a Star Destroyer and crash it. Wow. Jesus, that was the Force. <laughs> the Force unleashed. I, you want to talk, Mary Sue? That character right there is the personification. Yep. <laughs> and it was all yeah. It, no one, no all, one likes it, that guy. Yeah, it was all in good fun because that was a video game, and you sort of wanted to feel cool being in force. You didn't want to think about it too much uh, until you got to the end of the game and you realized that we're seriously trying to tie this in with the Star Wars trilogy. But like, if Star Killer was running around crashing Star Destroyers, what the fuck do we need Luke for? <laughs> it's. I will say that although the Star Killer base, I hated it as a concept. A lot of the action scenes on it were really cool. Like, I loved the final lightsaber fight. Um, you know, I liked their sneaking around. I liked the the scene. Uh, what did you guys think about the scene where Kylo Ren kills Han? Um, I thought, personally, it was it was handled pretty I well. I saw it. Well, here's the thing. Did we all see I, it coming a mile away? Yeah, as soon as Harrison I, Ford started I getting tons count. of screen time, I, I, I knew it was coming. Because um, I, I spoiled myself beforehand, so... Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Well, the moment... Like I got, I kind of got hints of it, like in the run the center of the movie when I saw how they were handling certain things between Han and Leia, you know, and they they hugged before going out uh, to the Star Killer. I was like, oh shit, that's a death sentence right there. You don't hug before you leave. <laughs> you just no, you just no. Don't I do that. I as soon as he called out Ben to yeah. Kylo Ren, I knew Han yeah. was I knew Han was dead, and it was more like a, and it was more like a does does how does Kylo Ren crack was my question. Yeah. It was tense throughout the entire scene, but oh, I, I yes, didn't know was. that Han I did know that Han was a god. Yeah. I was already I was <laughs> yeah. a, you know, again, it was it was all the damn it was all the damn episode four parallels that I, I kept drawing that I was, yeah, I was waiting for someone to get kicked the bucket. Yeah, sort of spoiler. And it like it, it started with some of the uh little intricacies between Han and Leia and how they were talking and then when they were in the Star Killer base, and then Han calls out to Ben, and he's in the middle of that catwalk. I was like, okay, I think this is it. And then the moment I saw Finn and Ray enter from out of reach, I was like, oh shit, yeah, this is it. This is where they're gonna kill yeah. Han. Um, so, it, oh I, wait, hold on a moment. Just a, just a question. Do I can't remember. Do Finn and Ray know that uh, that Kylo Ren is Han's son? They do eventually. Yes. Okay, they find out. Okay, sorry, yeah. I just I forgot. It um, was it was two things for me. One, Harrison Ford made it no secret that he wanted Han Solo to basically be killed off between episodes five and six, so he wouldn't have to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I so I'm like I was a bit surprised they even got him for episode seven at all. But and for so really like, okay, they're probably they're probably gonna kill role, him. Too. Yeah, but it's it's one of those. 
okay, I know Harrison Ford doesn't want to do this anymore, so they're probably only going to get him for one movie. Did you notice how happy he was? And the other thing is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think another thing, I think I may have read beforehand that he only signed up for one movie. So I yeah. was like, okay, it's a sequel trilogy. Either he retires, very unlikely, or he dies. Or he dies. <laughs> and, and I and I thought he, and then I realized he was going to die as soon as they started giving him all the screen time. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, you don't give it. It's like you don't give this much screen time to what is essentially not going to be a important character going forward if you're not going to do anything with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because if we're gonna go back to the New Hope parallels, Han functioned as the Obi Wan, which I thought was relatively in, uh, a rel- it, like it fit more than I thought it would. If you had told me that, like, if, <laughs> he's, he's a more snark. He's, he's basically a more snarky Obi Wan. Yeah. Yeah. Although, pretty much. I can't so. help but find it amusing how whenever, whenever, whenever uh, old old Harrison Ford gets involved in these Lucas movies again, he always has to deal with his bratty son. <laughs> you killed him, Shia LaBeouf. <laughs> you fucking killed him. Now, the scene is nevertheless heart wrenching, you know. Especially if you grew up with the original trilogy, you love Han Solo and you hate to see him go. Um, yeah. Even if it was pretty telegraphed, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, that it's it's and something poor, poor that poor Chewie. It's... I felt more horrible for Chewie than I did for no, no for Chewie. Myself. Chewie was. I think Chewie's reaction was spot on because like um. Because like you you know you knew he was going to go berserk uh, right after that so yeah I, I wonder if they're gonna have Chewie because if I remember correctly at the end of the movie Ray took the Millennium Falcon it was With I know Chewie, R- Chewie, is, Chewie yeah, and R2 Chewie there. Okay. Chewie, we, 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 and and BB-8 I think were with it. No, yeah, I think BB-8 stayed, stayed with Poe. Oh, right, yeah. uh, okay, I thought. so uh, yeah, Chewie. Well, y- y- well, as we established during the Millennium Falcon piloting scene very early on. Uh, the Millennium Falcon is a two-man ship. <laughs> you can't yeah. turn the shields and stuff on without a fucking co-pilot. <laughs> so che- Chewbacca, being a character that, well, frankly, they don't have to leave behind since he doesn't visibly age, um, Chewbacca's probably going to be a mainstay for, like, as long as they can keep him reasonably. You, you know, uh, thinking about it, like, as much as this movie pushed nostalgia, I'm surprised at how little R2 was there. I mean, granted, they wanted to push BB-8, who's their big new droid, but R2 is barely in the movie at all. R2 uh, being in the film sort of bothers me as well, because his reactivation is never explained. I, like, uh, you know what? He's it's, out cold for the duration of the film, and then Han kicks the bucket, he suddenly activates, I was like, this motherfucker. no. Okay, I've always had a theory with R2, and it's not going to make any sense because he's a robot. I think R2 is Force-sensitive. <laughs> like, look at all the shit he does well, throughout it's never six said, goddamn is movies. It ever said, Tell me it doesn't Is make it ever sense. stated in the series at all that only humans can utilize Actually, I think... Um, I remember... I think there is something about machines not being able to use the Force because... Uh, I, I, I remember... I remember... I remember... Uh, I remember... I may be paraphrasing a bit here, but I remember Obi-Wan saying in the original trilogy that the Force surrounds all things. All things being the keyword there, so... Uh, doesn't Yoda say, like, that rock, that stick, um, something like that yeah. in episode yeah. 5? Moon, like, you know, I'm just... I, grant, granted, I'm, I'm just bullshitting right now, but R2 has always kind of been kind of too lucky i think for it to be natural and he's my favorite character so i give him i give him all the slack in the world that he needs but like you know you think that they would have like one thing that doesn't make sense to me is that he's got most of the map to luke basically it's just like okay there's this one chunk of space that luke's definitely in why don't we look there is is, hey you know what r2 has R- yeah. r2 having force power suddenly makes the uh scene in a new hope make more sense you remember when uh uh, Luke and his family are choosing a droid to take home. That droid suddenly explodes. They, <laughs> yeah, they ain't a fucking coincidence. R two made that thing explode. Uh, R two was the Sith Lord all along. Yeah, <laughs> but um, <laughs> yeah. Screw you, Jar Jar Binks. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, let's um, what about the lightsaber battle itself, though? That that Look, I can I say, hmm. uh, Ted, you mentioned. Uh, the prequel trilogy, Star Wars, uh, the, the lightsaber battles. I agree; those are still uh, Episode One, especially like Episode One is still the Obi Wan versus so, Darth. If you, if you... Obi Wan versus Darth Maul to me is just like the epitome of athleticism 
and choreography with what you can do with a lightsaber. That's two and three are a bit too spinny and flippy and stuff. I do like episode. Uh, I do like episode three. I do like Palpatine versus Yoda because these are the two best Force users in the franchise, and I I, I do also like Obi Wan versus Anakin, but not as much as a uh, Maul versus Maul versus Qui Gon and yeah, Obi Wan. That's it. This lightsaber battle, the big one in Force Awakens, I like for different reasons because it's a different style of Force, like of lightsaber battle. Episode, the prequel trilogy, and I don't know how exactly to describe the original trilogy. The prequel trilogy was more flippy and all that shit. A very yeah. high, almost like a circus LA sort of dancing, a battling. A, a Force Awakens was very medieval. I felt, especially with Kylo Ren's battle style. Like after the, in the aftermath, after he kills Han and che- Chewie manages to get a good shot at him, and he starts bleeding out, and he starts beating his chest. He starts, no, you know, he well, he's trying to get adrenaline yeah. going. His injury to get the pain going, so that it yeah, would make the adrenaline to get the pain flow, going. Yeah, you know that gave the fight a sense of uh, uh, of down to earth that I don't think I've ever seen in any other Star Wars battle. And that's it felt why much more it. like an episode five or six lightsaber fight. Yeah, uh, I, which I was honestly I was surprised because I thought if they were going to pull one thing from the prequels, I thought it was going to be the action scenes. I so prefer, that was just... but you know what? It makes sense that it's yeah. not because as it we does. established, they're not completely trained. Yeah, yet. Uh, Kylo Ren yeah, is so... not fully attuned to the dark side, as is Rey is not fully attuned to the light side. They are still newbies, and this medieval style fighting. This, these heavy swings, these the the sloppiness of both sides, I thought felt very raw, and it was eye grabbing in that yeah, regard. Yeah, but it, I it, agree. It, the, the closest lightsaber battle to the one in Force Awakens is actually the one in, in the Empire Strikes Back, and I think they were going for that because they make one deliberate callback to it. Um, well, at least I think it's deliberate. I hope it's deliberate because it's too goddamn spot on not to be. Um, okay, do you remember <laughs> in the Empire Strikes Back? Darth Vader takes a lucky hit to his right shoulder immediately before cutting off Luke's hand. Well, um... Yeah. He, Finn on gets one right hit in, and then he... Kylo just immediate. Yeah, and Kylo Ren immediately just says, fuck <laughs> this. Him, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I just... I just, uh, I, I caught that right away. I was like, oh, I see what you did there, movie people. <laughs> but, um... I didn't. I didn't get that one. Actually, yeah, it, it was it was um, so. directly on the right shoulder too, and it wasn't shot for shot the exact same scene because we actually, in this case, um, we get completely different camera angles, a completely different kind of disarming, and and uh, Kylo Ren just sort of flips around toward the camera and has this really annoyed look on his face before dropping Finn on his back. But um. But, uh, you know, I'm with John on this one because the, the way the, the, the fight went, the way it was choreographed, it was all very primal. It, was, it felt like a struggle, whereas the ones in the prequels felt like two fantasy war heroes going at it. <laughs> um, whereas, yeah. yeah. It definitely has more, uh, I don't want to say poetic, but I can't find a better word. <laughs> right now but it definitely like you know the fact that the the fight ends literally by the earth splitting between yeah. them i thought was um was yeah. very fitting um i've had i've heard a lot of speculation that ray is luke's daughter i don't buy that well, personally um, it's, i'm hoping i'm hoping that's not the case because me too I'm thinking, because i went i'm thinking it's too obvious it's a little too obvious and uh if they're borrowing the fact that han and leia have kids borrow from the expanded universe that they have a son and a daughter <laughs> it's for me i think that going into ray's family at all undermines like the one of the only bits of character development she does get in this movie in that she's not just hoping that her family comes back she's completely delusional about it and she knows this like um because maz says something like you know that they're not you've known they're not going to come back for a long time or something like that and i thought that that was actually handled very very well um so i i hope that like she finds her "Quote unquote family in Luke and like not like real family but like emotional uh, family. Uh, inner you know inner peace. About. Like she finds a sense of family in her friends rather than finding her real family. Because yeah. I I like the idea that her real parents just put her on Jakku either because they left her behind, they sold her for money, whatever. But she doesn't need her real family. It's she finds a sense of family in her. Friends. I agree. I, I think, I, I think that's that the that way be I want it to happen because if she ends up being related to Luke or hell, uh, Han Solo, Princess Leia, no, I hate that. I would hate that. Yeah, 
pro- uh, I think I would and, too. You know, a, well, a lot of so. people, a lot of people go by the logic that the Star Wars movies are about the Skywalker family, and that's all well and good. But it's not just about the Skywalker family. Is is my thing? Uh, like, yeah, in Return of the Jedi, a major, major part of the climax was Luke versus Vader and the Emperor dying, but. Who was it that destroyed the fucking Death Star? And who was it that brought de- down those shields? It, it, it wasn't the le- it wasn't the Skywalker legacy that did those things. It was it was it was all of their allies working together. It was Lando Calrissian of all people who fired the killing shot and destroyed the Death Star. Yeah, it was Lando and no, I think Wedge, Wedge did the destroyed final shot. this power well, just... regulator off to the side and you know, okay, it, it was yeah, basically the it, two the of them. Then. But they worked together. Yeah. That's the point. Here's the yeah. thing. Wikipedia is probably the biggest fan wiki I've ever seen. The expanded universe is gigantic. It's, I mean, granted, the and Skywalker... it's all for oh, not. No. <laughs> but it's I just, have... I get the Skywalkers being like a central focus point, but the Star Wars universe is literally a universe. It's massive. That's part of the reason why I like it so much. And so, just having her be a, a Skywalker, or like maybe like. Uh, uh, no, I think, uh, it, I think Han and Leia would have known if she was their kid, so I'm not going to even guess that, but, yeah. like, um, if she just ends up, I think it would have felt very, I'd be very forced if she ends up being, Forced. Um, yeah. Oh, wait. Forced. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Well, you know, I could swing it either way, Kill to me. be honest. I just, um, I just hope that whatever they do with her, they, um, they fill in some of the holes that were left behind in in episode seven. Oh, you know, one of the things. Uh, well, I, I I'm kind of not surprised that some some aspects of this movie feel a bit rushed because it's fucking J J Abrams and well, let's look at Captain fucking Kirk in the Star Trek movie. Ugh. <laughs> Can we not? <laughs> well, it, I like speaking, that. They, speaking of Star Trek, how about that third Star Trek trailer that's trying way too hard to be an they, action? They, movie. they sort of um. They sort of rushed Captain Kirk into being Captain Kirk, you know? Like, it felt like... Uh... He's Captain by the end of the first movie, if I remember correctly, mm, right? Like, yeah. Okay, let's... Can we can we, can we we have a ca- character arc, please? You know, an actual <laughs> arc? <laughs> but, um... The Enterprise can yeah, wait. Yeah, and, um, you know, The Force Awakens isn't quite that bad, but, um... Well, uh, let's just say I, I'm kind of glad that the next movie's probably going to be done by someone else, because uh, uh, J- uh, Abrams is in directing all of them. I believe so. No. I think I heard very early on that he was. No, I don't think so. I think he's seven. just. I... Yeah, I think he's kind of producing eight and nine. He's kind of. I think he's. The, I think he's there to make sure everything stays practical. <laughs> um, yeah. that's how Lucas did uh, five and six, right? Yes. Four, five, and six, yeah. Uh, he only directed four and then was an overseer for five and six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And they ended up being better movies. Don't <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Return of the no, Jedi, well, debatably. But... No, uh, I, okay, I'm going to rank this. I uh, I think that this is better than three. And um, Okay, before Force Awakens, my ranking is four and five are tied, then three, then six, then one, then two. I know that that's going to piss off a lot of people that I like a prequel more than episode six, but fuck you, episode I can six sort of see has it. problems. I can see it. <laughs> yeah, I like it better than episode three on a um, better, a, a slightly better than episode three. And that's not a, a, that's not a knock against Force Awakens. I just, I like episode three on its own merits. Uh, it, that has issues too, but uh, I, it's not quite on four or five's level, yeah. I will say. We'll see what happens with episodes I eight and nine, though. I so. can't rate uh, The Force Awakens yet. I need yeah, the, I need to see it a few more times yeah. before I can... What I need is the other parts of the trilogy to see where everything fits in together before I can rate anything. Because there's a lot in this movie that just does not stand on its own, including the main fucking yeah. character. You say, you, you, can, you can rate it, Ted, I can't, because well, as I just... a movie, it is so incomplete um again maybe it's just because i'm more eh, with star wars in general but yeah. you know just on its own merits like if i were to if i were to turn on the tv i think i'd probably i'd watch this one before three and all the other in six one and two but i might turn on four or five first that's just how yeah. i kind of we're, like we're talking about you know here's the thing though we're talking about rating the film already as if we're done the discussion i think this really lays on the point about one of the most underutilized characters in the entire fucking film Phasma, 
What was it? The captain of the stormtroopers? Ah, Cap yes. Captain Phasma. Uh, oh, oh. She, she's in like two seats. Captain what? Boba Fett uh, Aran. Do we oh. really need a Boba Fett of the new no, generation? No, no, Okay, there's a story here. Okay? That costume was originally meant for Kylo Ren. And they liked the design so much they wanted to have another character use it. Um, so Captain Phasma was born, but Phasma is confirmed to be um, in Episode Eight. So she she didn't. She, so there was no death by a trash compactor here. She's confirmed well, I, to be I in never future bought movies. So um, yeah. So we'll probably like, see more personally, of it's she was she was cool. I'll give her that. She just was to me a minor a minor stormtrooper character. Like you know, oh she just didn't no! Do if anything. you go out of her, way, if you go out of your way to give her a shiny chrome armor with a cape and a different sort of gun, you want me to pay attention to that character. And I did. My eyes were on her all the time she was on the screen, waiting for her to do something, and she doesn't do anything. Yeah, like Boba Fett. Should we do it's, something. Yeah, it's like Boba Fett exactly. And you know what, Ted? That pissed me off because. We did that already with Boba Fett. And I, yeah, I know Boba Fett is, is this epitome of badass in the extended universe and all that shit, but... Isn't Boba Fett getting... I know they're doing other Star Wars movies. Isn't Boba Fett getting one? I, uh, I don't know. I couldn't oh, tell. I think so. But the fact is, I don't read any of that shit. I only go off what the films tell me, and Boba Fett is that guy that gets knocked into a Sarlacc pick by a blind Han Solo. Yeah. So he, he ain't you know... that badass to me. And for Phasma... I, that was to me their second opportunity to finally do something like that, and they did it again. Now I'm pretty well, sure episode know. eight. I know episode eight's gonna do some more with her. I'm sure. I, they better at least give her an action scene. Why oh, okay. wasn't she the stormtrooper that fought Finn with yeah. the with the that, that, that would have made blocker. a lot of sense actually. Yeah, but um, spe spe speaking of, speaking of uh, why is that one stormtrooper a meme all of a sudden? The one with the uh, light, the electric taser thing, and nails traitor at Finn. <laughs> a lot of people yell traitor at Finn. Why is that a meme all of a sudden? Finn. Yeah, but it, that one stormtrooper I've been seeing pop up in like gifs and all sorts of other <laughs> oh, things. You it's wanted, like, why is this one stormtrooper? If we're a gonna meme? talk about memes, once I really, uh, I was selling back my books for for uh, for class uh, for classes. I sold back three books. Uh, I wanted to sell back three books. One of them they wouldn't take. The other two, I would have gotten a dollar in like a half. And what I really wanted was that guy from Jakku, and I wanted to uh, make a post be like, uh, p uh, people at the bookstore when buying back your books be like, and then he'd be like, one quarter of One porch. quarter of <laughs> I really wanted that, <laughs> you know, and I, I couldn't just find love... it. <laughs> I just love how Ray works as a scavenger for instant cupcakes. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I mean, I realize it's some kind of uh, advanced space food, but it, it, she puts it in a bowl, mixes it, and it pops out as an instant muffin. <laughs> now, come on. We all risk our lives scavenging parts in brutal deserts for an no, instant muffin. No, but you know what? It's, it's such a parody of what a lot of people deal with in real life that I just couldn't help but laugh. It's just that it, it, it hit my black humor muscle in just the right yeah. place. But Captain Phasma, she she totally should have been the stormtrooper that yeah. fought Finn with the with the lightsaber it's, shot. I thingy, never, thingy. I didn't make that connection, but it makes a lot more sense. It would have yeah. been a good way to give her an action scene and make her more prominent because I'm sure she's on all sorts of merchandise. And oh and, yeah, yeah, and, and to make her more of Finn's enemy because we know. Ren is, since uh, Ray's going to be more the Jedi unless they do something with Finn, Kylo Ren's going to be more Ray. It bad makes guy. more sense for it to be to be Finn's for her to be Finn's bad guy because like one of the first scenes in the movie is him taking off his helmet and her being like, "What the what the fuck, dude? Put that back on." <laughs> yeah. So it, it it's a more emotional because I'm sure they're going to be doing more with Finn being a, an exiled stormtrooper in the, the later movies. So. Yeah. You know, it. You're. I think you're right. It. It would have made an awful lot of sense. Yeah, but you know, ultimately, what what softens the blow with Phasma is that we know there's more. There's going to be more to her. They should have had her do something in this movie because, well, she was presented pretty uh, frequently, but she just wound up being about as significant as that one dude that Vader force chokes and then says, "Hey, you're the admiral now." To the other guy next to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I. You know, that's. It's thinking about it. That seems to mirror a lot of. Uh, uh, our thoughts with the movie in general is is that there's set up here for something great it's just that we don't we haven't gotten there yet yeah, yeah. So. it's hard to talk definitively about the force awakens because it, it, we're not going to have that clear that clear retrospective view of it until we've got the stuff that comes after so all we can say right now is it was 
a great movie to go into the theater and see. But that's about it, <laughs> you know? It's I mean, like, I'm sure everybody watching this has already seen it, because... Well, at this... Like, yeah. well, we, 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 we gave the spoiler warning, like, a fucking hour ago. It, it, <laughs> yeah, but, like, it, it, it smashed opening uh, opening day and opening weekend records. Although, in Japan, it got out, it got beaten by fucking Yokai Watch, for some reason. <laughs> so, well, you know, Japan is um, Japan, and they like their own stuff. Um, yeah, but, um... But, yeah, but, you know, everybody here, it's like... It, everybody already went to see it so you know um and i should reiterate it is a, i still think it's a great film you know i i i told people uh, a few people around me and it's like what i think about the film i was like i thought it was great with that tone that there was a big ass butt at the end of that sentence and, yeah. but you know people around me seem to think oh if you don't think it's great you must think it sucks no i think it's a great film but a i felt i've seen this before and B, it's not a good standalone film. It so, is, John, what it you're is, saying is it, that you hate it. Yeah, it's a, it's, if it's a piece of shit, <laughs> Sonic 06 is better. <laughs> yeah. I think that's what some people would probably, you yeah. know, uh, mistrue you know, my opinion. It, it, yeah, but, you know, it, it not being that great as a standalone film isn't such a critical flaw at this stage because it's episode fucking seven in a movie series. So. Yeah. You know, to some extent, you expect it to rely on what came before. You're going to see out. episode eight anyway. Yeah, yeah you're damn right. And you know what? And because of episode seven, I am very much looking forward to episode eight. Not necessarily for the right reasons, but I want to watch episode eight so that the sequel trilogy can further develop as a kick-ass series of movies. And I'm pretty sure in hindsight, after I see episode 8 and after I see episode 9, I can look back in Force Awakens and see all of the the seeds of plot in a, in a better light, saying that, okay, yeah, this is what they're setting up for later on. Oh, that's so great the way they did it that way. But yeah. I can't do that now because I don't know what the future holds for the sequel trilogy. Yeah, I can't wait until we do a retrospective video five years from now about this. Damn right. <laughs> yeah, it's just um, it, it's uh, uh, I had something and I lost it. Um, it, it's it, it's got that um, mm, it's sort of like uh, at this point it's 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 so much of a setup that you need closure. <laughs> you, yeah, you, that's a good. You, that's a great way to put it. You just have to have that closure, otherwise, because for now, the Force Awakens is standing up as this one big, great, uncertain question mark in the series. Like, where is this going? What's going to happen? Are we going to be liking this ten years down the line? Um, uh, why doesn't Luke get a single line? <laughs> well, you know what? I, 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 uh, we yeah. already talked about that ending scene. I. I... I liked it. I liked personally. it too, but, but the, the, only, the only thing I didn't like about the ending scene was like, you know, uh, Ray's holding up that lightsaber for a really long time. <laughs> it's like, are you going to take the lightsaber or not? <laughs> no, but you know what I liked, and this goes back to me being able to actually rewatch the film and uh, analyze things. Mark Hamill's expression when he sees that lightsaber, it's just, it's subtle, but it's really good. Like he he looks really tired. Luke looks really tired. Yeah. I should say. You know, like, Mark Hamill's always been a great actor. Like he made Luke Skywalker work in A New Hope, and Luke Skywalker had basically nothing to him at that point in the series. He was a George Lucas self insert, and I'm not even making that up. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and now he looks like George Lucas. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's really weird to see Luke with like a with like a full out beard, which I I guess makes him look more traditionally Jedi, I suppose. But it's it's still strange because I always associate Luke as being clean shaven. So, you know, that's all that's a little weird. But yeah, um, is there anything else anybody really wanted to cover with Episode Seven? Um, Who else saw the five hundred first Legion logo? What? In the uh, panning shots. In Maz's place with all the flags, and one of the flags is the 501st is, Legion is logo. The, uh, what's the 501st from thing? Battlefront? No, from the fan group. The fan... Wasn't there... 501st Legion. Wasn't there a 501st in the actual canon of the Star Wars universe, though? Uh, Possibly. I'm not sure the details, but I know 501st Legion is the largest quote-unquote official Star Wars fan club. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Uh, you know what? I have Wikipedia up right now. I'm just going to look up the 501st. Okay, 501st. Um, yeah, 501st Legion in Legends, also known 
as the 501st Battalion during the Clone Wars and later known as Vader's Fist and the 501st was an elite unit of clone troopers commissioned by Supreme Chancellor Palpatine during the Clone Wars that later became a unit of Stormtrooper Corps during the Clone Wars blah 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 um, such as the Battle of Teth, Battle of Coruscant uh, and Operation Nightfall uh, following the the 501st transition to a Stormtrooper unit the uh, I realize um, that the only thing we really Jesus didn't Christ, cover a lot here. The only thing I really yeah, that's why I'm cutting you off. Uh, the only <laughs> reason why I the only, the only thing I really think we didn't go over as well as we did with anything else was the first order itself. They you were know, the not, the em- not they, they to me were the not empire no, in that and of that the empire, anyway. yeah, the em- remnants of the empire. For me, I just I really did not like Snoke and he was like the who was the big bad. Like I hope they do they managed More. to pull something out of their ass and make him interesting because, as he is, he was well. Uh, to be f- in general, in general, Huxes are totally not Moff Tarkin for yeah, this to movie. To be yeah. fair, um, when the Emperor first appeared in The Empire Strikes Back, he was about as interesting. So, yeah, granted, and you know, this is yeah, part we're comparing of my... we're comparing Snoke from what we know now to Emperor Palpatine, who we've had six movies with. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, it's, technically well, we've had five, 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 four yeah. movies with and one hologram. <laughs> but that hologram. Yeah, counts. it's just they. But he's the he is the same character as the as the emperor though. Is is also the thing. Yeah, but no, no, like, no, no, no. This no, guy's big. This guy's big. I, I wouldn't say so. Um, well, this again because I've been able to rewatch the film and analyze it. There's stuff about Snoke's. Uh, personality and mannerisms that hint that he's got a much different breed of evil to Palpatine being the chuckle, chuckle, laughing evil wizard dude. So I'm I'm looking forward to what they pull off with that. But at the same time, we've got a couple hologram phone calls to work with, so I can't yeah. say. Um, I it wouldn't, I like, just wouldn't it be some shit like the 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 biggest twist with Snoke is that he's actually really small. At the hologram, just make him look imposing. <laughs> that that I would not be surprised. Someone's compensating for something. I would not be surprised if they pulled tried to uh, tried to pull that. Uh, yeah, he's he's like Yoda sized. <laughs> yeah, that would actually be pretty interesting in Evil Yoda. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I I'm not sure what to think of Snoke right now. He's he he he's just sort of there. Um, as for the rest of the First Order, I thought that they were. It's hard for me to assess their their power on like assess them as a threat cuz i mean granted like they're they're stormtroopers and stuff like that and like they use a lot of the same like weapons as the empire so essentially they are the empire but i want to know how far their scope reaches i well, guess cuz uh, they established that the empire is basically the entire galaxy aside from the outer rim i want to know if they have that same kind of pull in, in or or if dealing with less resources is an issue yeah. for them. Or and they really, they really ramped up the space Nazi overtones this yeah. time. Oh, no, they, they, there are a lot of, like, Vietnam uh, references, like, with the the, the, the flamethrowers and stuff like that, and certain shots of the, like, helicopters in front of a sun. Like, wow. I know that Star Wars originally was supposed to be a commentary on the Vietnam War, but they really made it, they really pushed it a lot more with, with this one as well. Well, you know, uh, right off the bat, they're automatically a greater threat because they can name their goddamn blasters. But um, the um, <laughs> the, uh, that's a good point. That's a good point because like the opening sequence with the with them burning down the village made me fear them in a level greater than the original trilogy ever managed to accomplish with them. Yeah, again, well, the, the stormtrooper they don't they don't show the stormtroopers burning down Luke's house. You just see the the the, yeah, the aftermath. The yeah. thing the thing about the stormtroopers in the original he shots trilogy. too accurate for sound <laughs> people. <laughs> You know what? I now buy that. (laughs) The thing about the Stormtroopers in the original trilogy is that their shitty aim was down to special effects limitations. Now that now that we've got better technology to work with, uh, you know, you can actually show a Stormtrooper accurately shooting someone and have them fall and have that effect, you know, be spot on. I think I think it's I think it's it's more like because main characters get hit uh, by Stormtrooper blasts in this one. I think you couldn't really have that because. It was like a writing issue or you don't have the effects to make them be able to accurately like be injured by that Uh, because I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Finn gets hit by a few shots um, at the very least. I think Rafe runs away from the big fight on the plant on the on the planet where Maz lives. So she's not involved in that. Um, 
uh, uh, Chewie gets hit. Um, oh God, I can't really remember the rest, but yeah, yeah. The, the fact that stormtroopers hit stuff is is neat. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's uh, refreshing anyway. But but you know that was just a joke. As far as the um the the first order's uh, um influence goes, okay, they have on like on Jakku and on whatever the forest planet was. I forget what it was. You know, they have enough pull that you know the uh, the seedy underbelly the the not so savory people are willing to just rat people out to them in exchange for money or uh the guy tried to offer 60 um instant cupcakes to um <laughs> to ray <laughs> in exchange for um in exchange for bb8 uh because you know he wanted to turn it into the to the first order so the first order oh, that are was... a power oh but... yeah so oh, i just i want to you mentioned that um uh, you know, r- say what you want about Ray's character. I think Daisy Ridley, her actress, yeah. did a great job because, like, you know, again with the sixty portions, uh, you could clearly see she she seriously thought about uh giving up BB-8 at that point. Like, would you oh, turn shit. down sixty muffins? <laughs> what flavor? Pumpkin. Um... Oh fuck! I lost him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but so they've got enough pull that that you know the the, um, the uh, unsavory characters at the cantina automatically see it as profitable to work with them, which is pretty standard for the way mercenaries and the empire have always worked. And uh, well, they obviously have a f- they also they obviously have you know a lot of resources if they were fucking able to build Star Killer base by hollowing out a planet. Jesus Christ, what the fuck? But uh <laughs> I just hope that I just hope that episode nine doesn't end with Star Killer Base Mark II. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I doubt it. They, 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 Star Solar System. All right, the, the Star Killer base already had a shield generator that needed to be deactivated and a trench run. So we've got our 1.0 and 2.0 already. Yeah, but we need to have 3.0. Yeah, we have 3.0, yeah. But, you know, if they do decide to bring back Star Killer Base or some iteration of it or some iteration of the Death Star, what I want them to do is do something different with it instead of another scene where a fighter needs to go in and destroy a critical part of it to explode it because we've seen that three times now. Uh, Four if you count Phantom Menace. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that 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 was like the, the that was the, slapstick the... comedy. That wasn't a serious. Fighter it's still match. something going inside <laughs> something to blow it up from within by accident. <laughs> That's still a thing. I understand. Yeah, I don't like how it was handled. It, I, I'm not saying it was good, but it was slapstick <laughs> comedy <laughs> in a fighter. <laughs> the only serious part of that no, the only serious parts of that of that climax were Padme and Obi Wan. Because Padme was the first, um, the first on record uh, living thing with a blaster in the Star Wars universe to actually hit something dead on with a shot, and um, and uh, Obi Wan fought Darth Maul, and that that almost made up for all the rest of the climax by itself because of how awesome it was. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you think Kylo Ren has seen the the footage of Annie going? Let's try spinning. That's well, a cute trick. You know what? He he. I, I, he <laughs> oh, I thought you were about to say him killing all the younglings. Um, oh no, not that. He probably actually he probably jacks to off to that. <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. Okay, the first order has information from the uh, Imperial archives, which is how they have the rest of the map that they need to fill in with the one BB-8 has. So yeah, um, he pro- hey. they, they probably have footage of Anakin Skywalker slaughtering Jedi younglings too. Here's my thing though. Uh, it's something I didn't really think until like after the fact, but. Force ghosts are still a thing, right? Yeah, no, that's a that's kind of sort oh, of. oh 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 oh. You you do hear you go to an Obi Wan and yeah, yeah but they it's have, like they got but, uh, they got Ian McKellen to record some lines and they did some Ian and, McKellen, Ian McKellen. And, uh, Ewan McGregor, Ian McGregor. Why did oh god, <laughs> Ian McGregor. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Ian, sorry I liked not... him as Obi Wan Magneto. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but, uh, mine, mine. But they did get, uh, they did have him record some new dialogue. I think they had Frank Gauze record some new dialogue, and I think they took. Oh God, uh, they took, they took, they took a word from Alec Guinness and kind of worked yeah. it to sound like. Yeah, right. but no, I think there's still a thing, but I think it's probably harder for people without a emotional connection to that go- force ghost to see them, which is probably why Ray, when she touched the lightsaber, had like a spirit quest kind of thing but going it, it's on. It's like, um, you know, a Kylo Ren. 
idolizes Darth Vader. I'm assuming completely unaware of his grandfather's accomplishments or his turn at the very end. Like, I I'm surprised, like, Anakin as a Force Ghost, like, hey, motherfucker, you got it all wrong, man. Like, I was like that. <laughs> but I'm not like that anymore. <laughs> so, uh, well, he I, put well, that helmet no, away. I don't, th I don't think Darth Vader's betrayal is on record. I, th I think that's only something that Luke really knows about. Yeah, uh, no, the, the First Order was taught a specific thing that involves Luke Skywalker destroying their glorious empire, and uh, and Darth Vader turning at the very end was something they didn't know about. Okay, at the end, while everyone was running to evacuate the Death Star, they ran right past Darth Vader and Luke. <laughs> yeah. But, and that no, was, but you know, remember, Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren was part of... Luke's Jedi Academy. You don't think Luke would share info on his father saying that he was a great Jedi? And... Well, especially considering Kylo Ren's his, his nephew. No, his, his grandson. No, no, ne no. Ne Ky Kylo no, I was Ren talking about Luke's. Luke. Oh, okay, Luke. okay. No, okay. I, I, I was talking more between the connection between Kylo Ren and Darth oh, yeah. Vader. You know, yeah, you would think, it, would you think it, Luke yeah. would share that info? Well, you know, you, he might have. Then he might not. He might have been the sort who just wanted to not talk yeah. about it. I, I, again, this is something we're going to get more info, I think, when we actually get some screen time, real screen time with Luke. Yeah, at this um, point... But they I'll... do they do say, I think, uh, when Han and Leia are talking, it's that uh, Luke couldn't get through to him uh, or something like that. I wouldn't be surprised if he did tell one version of Anakin slash Darth Vader to Ben and then Snoke told him a different version that he ends up um, internalizing. Believing. Yeah. Yeah. The, um... The only thing we know for sure about Kylo Ren and his uh, obsession with Vader is that at some point he must have gone to fucking Endor and got the helmet back. Because... Oh yeah, because it was. Oh yeah, because the helmet was uh, burned. It, oh wait, it... hold on, damn it! That means that the that the Ewoks are still alive. Damn yeah, it, the no. expanded universe. <laughs> uh, the expanded universe is gone, and that means that the. Death Star's wreckage didn't just rain down on the planet, which to this day Shit. I'm still convinced is some asshole Arth author just trying to make the Return of, Return of the Jedi seem more cynical than it was, because I'm pretty sure the Rebel fleet would have cleared that shit up before it fell to the planet. It's what I well, would have do. done if I was in charge. Well, it's they, they do show, like, on, ja on Jakku that, like, sometimes ships do fall on the planet, though, yeah. and yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that had... Star Destroyers and stuff, that had, yeah. Yeah, if because a, a star, you do realize that a star destroyer landing on a planet is about the same kind of impact that killed the dinosaurs. <laughs> so you know, um, yeah. yeah well, <laughs> assuming it, assuming it it crashed dead on and just didn't f try to crash land and then didn't quite make it. Yeah, um, I am looking true. forward to the scene where Luke talks to Ray about Anakin. It's like I saw my father; he was a great man. He was a, he died an old man. Then his force ghost came back, and it was like a twenty something. I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, he had really floofy hair, but he was bald yeah. when I saw him. <laughs> it's like, he got younger when he became a Force Ghost. I was like, why didn't Ben that? Why didn't it happen to Ben or Yoda? Uh, no, no. New uh, new Super Duper Special Edition of Episode 6 where it's <laughs> Ewan McGregor. And, <laughs> it's and Yoda. Yoda just looks it. exactly the same. <laughs> no, you know what? Super Duper version of A New Hope where um, instead of the original actor, it's Ewan McGregor's face pasted over it with a with, with the <laughs> oh we're getting bruce lee they, game uh... of death him this son of a bitch uh, yeah i'm but, down um... with that uh <laughs> so yeah we liked it sort of i guess we um... liked it we have our concerns and we have a few complaints um and that's about it i guess yeah that's all it's there is a... to really say force awakens is a great film not a good standalone film but it does make me want to see episode eight, and I think that's what yep. that's the only thing Lucasfilm or Who's Disney cares do. about. <laughs> they want more of my money. Mm -hmm. They're gonna get more of my money, <laughs> but episode eight better be fucking spectacular. It, it <laughs> that's does. All I can it say. does very much feel like an authentic Star Wars movie, which is something that I feel was really missing from the prequels, though. So, yeah, uh, I agree. I, I can look at any shot from this and not immediately see green screen. <laughs> or anything like that, you know? I'm like, because, you know, I, I recently went back to episode two, especially. Uh, uh, so it's revisits, and Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, it's like, okay, there, there's like no physical ground below any one and a half the locations. <laughs> <laughs> the background, you can clearly tell is, C is CG. And, let's not, and le let's not be unfair, because The Phantom Menace was like the first movie to have that kind of sweeping CG environment 
thing going on for it so in its own way it was dazzling especially at the time but it's it doesn't have the same sort of feeling that star wars has you know uh yeah. lewis uh when starkiller base is blowing up all the planets i could have sworn one of them was coruscant uh no you, uh, it wasn't okay because no. it was like a huge city looking planet so i assumed coruscant but well, I guess well it was a lot of huge city looking planets in the star wars universe like for yeah. example the one you start off on on in kotor um sort of ish yeah, yeah but when i look at the but when i look at the movies that's the first one that comes to mind well, yeah you know okay. we could have we could have it was designed for one shot of being obliterated and they actually wanted to show people on the planet so it wasn't completely soulless so they just made a generic city planet yeah but okay. it still has the same effect i don't care <laughs> <laughs> okay but uh so anyway um... yeah it's still uh what about you ryan I generally enjoy it. I think I'm I'm really just waiting for episodes eight and nine at this point because that just built me up to so many other things. But that's about okay. it. It did get me re-energized in Star Wars, I do think, which was very important. Yeah. I'm yeah. excited about a new movie as opposed to oh, better go see it because I wasn't Star sure Wars. if I liked that or not. And then as the years go, your frown gets longer and longer and longer. His heart his heart shrunk three sizes. Yeah, <laughs> it's the opposite effect of the Grinch. Yeah. But you know, it's not just future episodes that we're going to be waiting on now. We're going to be getting spinoff movies in between. So basically one movie every year. That's going to be strange. Um, Rogue One's the first one, right? Yeah, I believe so. Rogue yes, and then, and then Young Han Solo. So yeah, it's Wedge, like... Young Han Solo... What's the next one? Boba Fett? I could have sworn probably. Boba Fett got, was going to get one. Yeah. Uh, young yeah. Han Solo is probably where they're going to bring back Jabba the Hutt. Or some younger incarnation of that. I do alley, think yes. that we're going to get, like... I do think that they're going to try to take the time to flesh out things in the original series that didn't get a lot of attention. And I always thought that Rogue One was one of those things that, like, I never which, got... Which does a ton of shit and they just never talk about it. Yeah, so, like... like so I, I I do think that they did make good choices, except for Boba Fett, because like try all you want, you really can't make me care. <laughs> so yeah, um, we'll see how those goes. Um, the the good thing about those is is that if one of those doesn't end up being great, you can't really take it out away from the main the main uh, course, which is going to be the new trilogy. So yeah, yeah. Well, um, hmm. I guess that's the end of our long ass discussion, isn't it? I thought we were only going to go for like I... an hour. <laughs> so Star Wars? Uh... What are you fucking kidding? <laughs> Wait, you, we're we're almost at the the runtime of the movie <laughs> at this point. <laughs> so listen to take your iPod into the theater and listen to yeah, our this podcast. It's an alternate discussion. commentary track. <laughs> <laughs> I shall leave you all with a joke I heard about this movie. After the first reading of the script, Mark Hamill took J.J. aside and said, May I have a word? <laughs> I mean, actually, I'm sorry, I don't, mean to, I don't mean to shit on the ending of this, but why was he at the script reading? <laughs> so he could stare at Daisy Ridley uncomfortably. So, who wants Space Muffins? <laughs> 